The foreclosure crisis isn't just about lost documents, it's about trust and who is going to get stuck with the $1.1 trillion in losses. Bloomberg Business Week discusses the shredding of the American dream in its latest issue, which hits newsstands today. For more on the story, we are joined right now by the magazine's editor, Josh Tarangelt. Josh, thanks for coming in to talk to us about this. You say this is about trust, it's also about paper, but somehow as a taxpayer, I assume I'm going to be paying for part of this mess. Well, that is a big question. Is who's going to who's going to in the end take care of all of these debts? Um, what the reason we put it on the cover this week is really because it crystallizes this problem. There are people with pieces of paper that they say own their houses. There are banks who say you're falling behind on your payments. We went through court, and frankly, we own your house. And there's no real clarity. The system isn't organized so that from county to county, state to state, people know exactly who does own your house. And so, what we really wanted to dive into is not just the financial consequences, but when you put banks against individuals, again, we've been hearing about this for the last three no, it's years. It's a big theme. It's a big theme, but it also creates political tension. It creates emotional, psychological tension. And, you know, once again, we're back at this point. Um, so we decided this was the week to really dive into it. All right. Yeah. I mean, I've heard some uh, incidental reports which have a guy who's maybe late a few months trying to pay his mortgage. He contacts where he thinks he's supposed to pay. The mortgage has been sold. And uh, I've heard with the nightmare scenario is actually five calls later, five transfers later, he finally figures out who he's supposed to pay. Sure. And, and the MERS system, I mean, so, the, you know, it wasn't, this is, it, we don't want to oversimplify the problem. Banks are certainly aware that when you've got to hold mortgages and promissory notes, you've got to organize things. But with the MERS system, just because you can find your mortgage doesn't mean the person who you found actually has the piece of paper. Right. And because most of our courts, dating back centuries, consider paper the real deal, evidence of ownership, um, it's created an, an incredible amount of confusion, not just for people who are in foreclosure or facing foreclosure, but for people who are up to date on their mortgages. What's also great about this article is you point out why we're not going to see a solution anyway from politicians right now. Yeah, I mean, politically speaking, this is just a no-go zone. So Congress obviously you know, passed a very politically shrewd move, which would have stopped all foreclosures immediately. Uh, President Obama put a pocket veto on it, and I think that most people realize that's probably the more rational approach, which is let's pause things for a bit before either stopping foreclosures and absolutely cratering the housing market or just, you know, going right after and continuing. And, all right, and so obviously with midterms coming up, we're not going to see. Uh, don't expect a political solution to this problem hold anytime your soon. Yeah. All right, well, we have to move from housing to fish because you wrote uh, an article. There's an article in the magazine from China, the future of fish, about how more and more Americans are eating tilapia. It's become a $200 billion business here, but some questions about quality control. Well, as always, I mean, th this is fish that comes from halfway across the world. And when we think about the, the imports from China, we really don't think about perishable goods. Um, but, you know, Americans' appetite for tilapia has gone, but it wasn't in the top 10 fish 10 years ago. It's now the number two white fish. And so we are, you know, Americans get hungry, Chinese start cooking, and we don't really probe into what's going on with those fish, how they're getting fed. And in fact, they are getting fed some rather trashy ingredients which you point out in the article. So people have to read that. I don't want you to leave here without talking about the inequality delusion, which is another great article. You, there were two psychologists that went around and polled people just how fair do you think this country is as far as money goes? Yeah, it's interesting. So there are two psychologists, Dan Ariely and Michael Norton. And what they did was ask thousands of people what their perception of the distribution of wealth in America was. And, and they asked them, what is the top quintile, the top 20 percent in the U.S. hold? And most people said that the top quintile holds 59% of wealth, when in fact they hold 84%. And not only do they think it's lower than it is, they actually think it should be even lower. They, they want America in some ways to look like Sweden, where the top quintile holds about 30% of wealth. Now, economists would freak out if they knew that that's what people wanted, because it's a terrible way to actually get the engine of growth going. At the same time, across Republicans, Democrats, everyone seems to think that the distribution should be greater. All right, Josh, we have to let it go there. Josh Sharon he is the editor of Bloomberg Business Week.